नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स लेट अस कंटिन्यू द सर्किट डिजाइन फॉर स्पार्टस 7 एफजीए द डिवाइस दैट वी हैव टेकन इज एक्सिस 7s50 डैश 1 एफटीजीबी 196 ओके सो वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन दिस पर्टिकुलर एफपीजीए यू नो लाइक पावर सप्लाईज एंड a lot of resources that is available with this like what is the logic labels how many ios and all those things now we'll start with directly the schematic that we are going to discuss right now all right so we saw in the last session how we have designed this particular uh, symbol for this particular fpga we, which we have uh, x 7 s 50 dash 1 ftzb 196c now let us get into the first piece <clears throat> all right so very first thing that we have to do is the very first thing that we have to do is you have to start with you know like a, a configuration and all those things however before that each of the section or each of the block of fpga requires a decoupling capacitors and power supplies and all those things okay so those we will discuss one by one okay we are going to go ahead with you know like a circuit design one by one okay so very first thing that we have to do we have we have done is here the configuration so configuration a very simple one which we is there by default from the amd so that is their platform cable usb 2 so this is a 14 pin uh, you know like connector and that is going to have jtag configuration okay so we have put here jtag lines with proper uh, pull up resistors and all those things so you can see jtag tms jtag tck tdo tdi okay and corresponding to this you can see here in the fpga configuration section all these fpga tdi tdo tms tdk lines are connected so this is very simple configuration techniques that we have followed all right so i hope you have now a very good idea or very good understanding about this now some other pins are there like we have done pins so once configuration is done uh, it will show you it will give you an indication that yes the configuration is done so for that what we have done is we have put this done as you know like output and it will go high so in that case uh, whenever it is done then it will go low in that case you know like this led will not glow okay so this is how you know like it will it will happen so basically what we are doing is with this particular done pin we are trying to drive an led okay so this will show our configuration done status all right Similar to that, we have programming B and then we have configuration status, we have VCC BAT, all these pins are connected one by one. So you can see program B has been connected to a push button here. Okay. So this is push button that is connected. So it must be pulled up okay, to make it working. And whenever you uh, push it down, it will be reprogrammed, something like that. Then we have a config block like CF, CFGBS. So you can see CFGBS is where? Yeah, here. So it is pulled up. And if you want, you can pull it down by making this jumper sort. So this jumper can be sorted and you can pull it down. So based on the configuration that you want, you can do the changes. Now coming back to the uh, ADC pin supply voltage. So the ADC pin supply voltage has been uh, done here, ADC, X ADC VCC. Similar to that, we have reference voltage, uh, you know, like 1.25 volt. All these voltages have been generated. You can see here very nicely that the auxiliary voltage, which was 1.8 volt, that has been filtered with a ferrite bead and this is converted to X ADC VCC. Okay. And this is coming from a reference IC, a voltage reference IC that is there. So hope you have now a good idea like how <coughs> how do we start proceeding okay the thing is for adc you know like reference in and adc ground we have a separate ground so if you want you can have uh, this properly like this and if you want to have very uh, rough design or something like that you don't need a proper grounding and all then you can have same as this ground okay no problem will be there we have this X, a DXP, a DXP and DXC, a DXN. So this is actually, you know, like a, a ADC differential input. We have VP, VN. If you want, you can have this input as well. Then we have interrupt B pin. Then we have a QSPI, okay? So this is nothing but your, you know, like a, a quad SPI clock. So that is there. And then we have mode setting pin. So this mode setting pin actually tells us like what is the mode of 
configuration so if you come down here i have listed down several configuration techniques okay so based on the mode pin status either all of them are 000, zero then it will be acting as master serial mode if all of them are 111 then it will be acting as slave serial mode <clears throat> Then if it is uh, 001, then it is going to be master SPI and JTAG, it is going to be 101. So we'll be configuring this particular, you know, like FPGA with JTAG. So that's the reason I have put it default. And in that case, this particular deep switches, three pins are there, like uh, pin number one, two, three. So these upper three are mode zero, mode one, mode two. So it actually happens from m2 m1 m0 so this is how it will be configured so based on that you can have the status right side it will be on that is one and left side it will be off okay so you can see and this particular status has been taken to ios of our fpga so that we can also read them and understand what is the status that is uh, configured or what is the way that has been configured so based, based on this particular, you know, like mode setting, like let us say 101. So these three pins will be read 101 and we'll be understanding this is a JTA configuration. Okay. If you want to have a permanent configuration or something like that, so no problem. Uh, this configuration mode can be made permanently. You remove all of them. Okay. This one, this one, you remove it. No problem. And you connect uh, these three resistors and these three resistors. So these three resistors are pulled up and these three resistors are pulled down. So in that case, <clears throat> what we can do is, uh, we can make it 101 configuration based on your needed. Based on the understanding of, you know, like uh, uh, decoupling capacitor requirement for each block. So this is a particular capacitance, uh, uh, you know, like series that has been given for this particular block. And the power supply for this block is 3.3. Uh, so now you have a complete idea of this particular, you know, like configuration seat. Coming back to the, uh, you know, like a uh, configuration uh, that will be stored. So that is uh, for that we have used SPI flash memory. So this SPI flash memory <laughs> is going to have SPI clock line, then data line DQ1, DQ2, DQ0 and DQ3. So DQ0, 1, 2, 3 and we have QSPI. Uh, chip select as well so this is a particular you know like spi flash memory that has been uh, put for the you know like a uh, program support or programming stories okay so if you do have any questions regarding this particular configuration block you can put down your questions in the comment box you want to make any changes or something like that you can always request us and we will be able to give you proper understanding how to do that if we if we try to understand quickly to finish up this configuration page so this qspi signal has to be connected to our fpga line so for that what we have done is we have used these lines like you can see we have uh, d00 d1 d2 d3 so you you have qspi dq0 dq1 dq2 dq3 so all these lines have been used for this configuration purpose lines okay and chip select line has been used this one got it so good, uh, configuration is done. Before moving to the next pages of circuits, what we'll do is we'll give you a heads up like how to identify what is the functionality of each pin and what are the things that you should do or decision take decision on that. So let us say from my design document, from my design document, <clears throat> Okay, so in that what we will do is we will just directly go into the uh, pin definition. Okay, so there is, a, you know, like a design consideration and pin definition and all these things are there. However, what we will do is we will go ahead with 7 series pin definition completely. Okay, so in that case, <laughs> you can refer if you want to, uh, you know, like refer completely, you can refer user guide 475 and 475 you will, it, it will give you all, all understanding. So this is the pin name and this is the definitions that is there. So if you want, you can have like what is my clock zero, done pin. So done pin C, done indicates successful completion of configuration. Okay. So it is active high. So once it is there, it will be active high. Similar to that, you know, like uh, indicates initialization of 
configuration memory so once configuration starts then int b will start okay so this is how all of them are there then configuration mode selection all these pins and their definitions are given very nicely so you can refer this and you can ask us like where you can get this particular uh, pin definition and their understanding uh, you can we will give you the solutions okay if you come down now you can see like each of the pins vrn vrp dxp dxn these things we saw in the first one right so you can see what is the thing that is there for this particular pins all right that's all so this was all about this particular uh, you know like fpga pin description in the next session what we'll do is we'll try to go ahead with the next phase of the circuit like how to connect user ios push buttons and deep switches and several other parts of the circuit designs all right thank you guys